In today's video, I'll be covering some of the most common mistakes you make with attackers in Rainbow Six Siege. These mistakes can affect your gameplay or just not have the impact you need from all these gadgets. So it's important to know what you're doing wrong. I already made one video for defenders, so if you need to watch it, link is in my bio. Let's start with our first operator. For Sledge, do not stand on soft floor and play vertical, cause there's a high chance you get shot through the holes you make or just get C4'd. What you want to do is find a safe spot like a concrete floor and sledgehammer one place and carefully move to another spot. For Thatcher, some of you don't know, but you only throw one EMP on the wall when you're dealing with Bandit or Kai. This is wrong because they still have time to trick the wall, but if you throw two EMPs one after each other, you can disable their new Electro Claw or Bandit charge and they missed their chance to keep the wall closed. With Ash, don't use your Ash Charge on barricades. It's the most stupid mistake you can make. Right now, Ash Charge is game-changing because you can get rid of mirror windows and so much utility. Don't waste it. For Termite, do not wait till the charges go off with EMPs and then put it on the wall. That's too late and Bandit can destroy your charge. What you can do is time it and put it on the wall when it's electrified. And good thing is, it doesn't get destroyed. So you basically do 90% of deploying and then EMP gets all the electricity and you just blow your Termite. Wall gets opened. Moving on to Twitch, don't take the most common way to mirror windows and utility. You have to actually sneak up and take the shortcuts, like drone holes that no one thinks about. Also go slow, don't rush it, your gadget can change the round. Number one mistake with Monty is being scared. Shields are now so much stronger than before so you can run at them and be actually annoying. If you stay back as Monty, you lose the advantage you have. With glass, do not shoot and make sound before you actually smoke and pick enemies. If defenders hear that you're glass, then you won't find anyone through smoke. So either run suppressor on your gun or just don't shoot until you get to the position. One mistake you make with fuse is not comboing your fuse charge with breach charges. Instead of having 50% chance to get a kill, you can make it 100. So place a breach charge on one side and fuse charge on the other and deploy them both. It's a win-win situation. If you can't bring breach charges, then have a vertical player like Bok or Ram. For Blitz, your push has to be fast. It should take 1 or 2 seconds for you to see your enemy and take the gunfight. So if you're pushing from somewhere that you have to take a lot of map control, then play Monty. Blitz is usually for rushes, so tight hallways or jumping windows to sight can be really good. IQ common mistake is not being careful. So if you play IQ, you want to take wall camps or get rid of charges from below or other utilities. Now when you switch to your pistol, you're vulnerable. First, make sure flanks are covered and be quick with your scanner. Some of you take forever to shoot things from below and you get flanked. Buck is special for his aggressive shotgun plays, and I still see some players who take common ways to shoot people. Go open up the walls next to them or open up the floor or roof. You gotta surprise your enemy with your shotgun instead of taking a normal gunfight. For Blackbeard, do not grapple on the windows. You can get more kills if you just move around and shoot people. When you're on windows, you're standing still, and it's not that hard to break a BB shield anymore. Maybe if you mix it with your movement, you can win more gunfights. For Capitao, do not use your smokes first. Your fireballs can cut off rotations and stop defenders from moving. If you smoke first, they just move around through it and you have no idea where they are. Then you might not even cut them off with your fire. Moving on to Ibana, don't just shoot 4 pellets on the hatch unless you're sure it doesn't get kite tricked or impact tricked. If they are doing that, go 2 pellets until they run out of utilities. With Jackal, track the footsteps that are new, not the old ones. New ones are red and old ones are blue or green, so track enemies who are closer to you. In my experience, whenever I tracked old footsteps, they were just back inside and I couldn't do much with that info. For Ying, wait till your candelas are fully deployed and your enemies are flashed, and then push. Some of you push a bit too fast and you get killed just before they get blinded. Also, you don't have to always keep your candelas for sight and plant. You can use them to get more control of the map. Next one is Zofia. Don't use only one type of your gadget. As you know, you have impacts and concussions. Now what some of you do is shoot only your concussion or your impacts. What you want to do is first, use concussion to see if there are any ADSs or Vomai magnets and then switch to impact to check again and then concuss anyone. This way not only you use one of your utility but also you have one more left. Dukaibi is extremely good for dealing with roamers. However, you don't want to use both of your calls to do that. If you can, try to keep one for sight because then you can plant the bomb and cover the sound or make them distracted or panic. So that would be a good thing to keep in mind. Common mistake with Lion is when no one is in action and close to map and then you use your Lion scan. It's completely useless. Pay attention to where your teammates are and what they are doing. Then use your scan to hold defenders in place. Same thing I can say for Finca. Don't just boost your teammate when they are full HP. However, if you hear some gunshots and people close by take gunfights, use your heal. Common mistake with Maverick is staying on the holes you're making and I don't blame you. It's a bit hard to master this skill. What you want to do is go prone and just crawl back while you're Mavericking. Trust me, they can't see your head or hand. This is the best way and pro way to make a wall soft. For Nomad, common mistake is putting your Nomad charges low. Look how easy it is to shoot it when I want to flank. Moving on to Gridlock, what you shouldn't do with hair is throw your tracks on top of the staircases. Since they expand a bit weird, make sure it's covering the flank and they can't find a way through it. Next one is Nook and make sure you're not running when you're invisible. They can't see you completely but they will hear sound and also there will be an outline around you. So they for sure know you're Nook. Just walk and hide until your gadget recharges. For Amaru, please don't just rush into sight. 
first drone and get some info and then Amaru in as quick play and rush. What I do is take top 4 control with the drone on bank and it's super powerful cause they don't expect someone to be in the map that quick. With Kali, stop staying in spawn holding one angle to sight. That's pointless. You wanna help your team with your gadget for the walls and shields and if you're attacking let's say garage, you can use your sniper to full potential. For Ayana, first of all don't drone too much cause your clone makes a lot of sound so they might just push you. Also don't drone if you're close to your enemy cause until you come out of the drone, you're dead. I think you all know what's a common mistake with ace. Do not throw your ace shards too high. Some of you do that and then you have to jump through the bridge instead of just walking which puts you in a disadvantage. Cause you make sound and also it messes up your crosser placement. Moving on to zero, I think most common mistake is shooting your cams in the most expected place and time. Usually there are some nasty spots on different maps that you can throw your cams and no one can notice it or see it. That's how you want to play zero. If your cams get shot often, know that your cams are not that good. With Flores, do not just start with your retro drone. A lot of times you run to somewhere that you have no info about and you either go into mute jammer or don't know what to destroy or it just gets shot. So first, use your normal drone and when you get info on what they have, use your retro drone for the most important gadgets. Or also make sure that there's no one close to you to swing from right or left side because i've seen a lot of free kills where also is placing down the shield and dies from the sides so be careful when you want to do that also you can't move around too much because your feet is exposed if you play sense do not block your line of sight you want to see what you're dealing with and block only your enemy's line of sight some of you just bounce them off the wall and then you have no idea where you're going or where they can be try making a straight wall between you and your enemy common mistake with grim is shooting your bees on doors and windows what i mean is you want to clear some corner but you shoot it on the door you're positioned sometimes you take too long to shoot a bee and then you get headshotted with launcher in hand. So practice this in custom game, quick pick and shoot where you want your bees to be. With Bravo, hack the most important gadget first. Since you have three, maybe you want to get cams and bulletproofs first and then stuff like capcan traps or mid jammers. Ram, do not play vertical when you throw your autobot. Instead, hold flank. Because this gadget makes a lot of sound. Defenders can just walk or maybe even run and flank you and you won't even hear any sound. So throw your stuff and just hold the flank or watch cams. Then after all of that, you can play vertical. So do not rush it. And for last one, demos. Do not run around crazy to kill the opponent you found. Chances are you get killed in the middle because you're running and making a lot of sound. Also, it might be better to push with your teammates. I still see a lot of demos players who lose the 1v1 because defenders also know where you are. So call out the information and play as a team. And that's it for today's video. Hope you guys learned something new from this one. Make sure to like and subscribe. And until the next one, stay safe.